In World of Warcraft, players can obtain pets through almost all aspects of gameplay. Some of these pets can be used in pet battling, while others are merely cosmetic companion pets. There were over 1500 pets in WoW at the time I recorded this video, and today we're going over some of the pets that require the longest amount of time to obtain. And at number 10, we have a secret battle pet, the Sun Darter Hatchling. This secret pet was added in Legion and is extremely difficult and annoying to obtain because there are so many weird and bizarre specific things a player needs to accomplish in order to get the pet. The pet itself is looted from the oddly colored egg at the end of the Caverns of Consumption in Winterspring. The entire process to obtain the pet is too long to list out in detail in this video, but it consists of 16 steps which must be done in the proper order, and each step requires certain items. What primarily makes this puzzle so difficult is that the materials required to pass each specific stage are from different professions, expansions, and achievements. Various buffs must be arranged to make each part of the puzzle work, and messing up one will require the player to start over and have to acquire any items that were used. All in all, a player will need 6 damage protection potions and 2 types of oil, all created by alchemists. A special alcoholic beverage from Blackrock Mountain, some Nogginfogger elixir, Scotty's Lucky Coin, which is a toy from the Talonk Steps, the Gordok Ogre Suit from Dire Maul, the Perky Pug Pet from the Achievement Looking for Multitudes, a little princess costume to dress up the Perky Pug, a scroll of intellect, and lastly, a fire water from the fur bogs in Winter Spring. While most of the items can be bought at the auction house, these items will also likely set you back a fair bit of gold, as the only reason to buy these items now is for this pet. However, four of the items needed are buy-down pickup and must be acquired by the player themselves. As such, the player must at least travel to Tanaris to buy the Nogginfogger elixir, go to the Talonk Steps to kill Scotty for his lucky coin, and finally, use the Dungeon Finder tool to finish random heroic dungeons until the player has grouped with 100 random players in total. The final part is needed for the achievement Looking for Multitudes, which awards the Perky Pot Pet to the player by mail. And it's this achievement which can be the most time-consuming part of it all. Luckily, most players will probably have this achievement if they play for even a little while. Gathering all the ingredients on top of correctly performing the puzzles means getting this pet could easily take someone several hours to days, depending on how they acquire the ingredients and how badly they mess up the puzzle's specific steps. There are plenty of guides online to help players get this pet, and since most of the ingredients can be bought off the auction house, it shouldn't take the player too long to get the Sun Darter Hatchling. For the benefit of a doubt, we're placing the Sun Darter Hatchling only at number 10 on our list, since as long as players follow the specific instructions exactly, and hopefully do not run into any bugs, they should be able to get it relatively quickly. Although, since the pet's addition, potions have been changed from 1 minute cooldowns out of combat to 5 minutes in or out of combat, and because of this, the first two walls that used to take 5 minutes to get through now take an entire 25 minutes to get all six potions activated, so maybe activate them on your way to the cave. And at number 9, we have another secret battle pet, Baal. This secret demonic goat pet was added in BFA and requires the player to click on a series of pebbles in a specific order, which can be found across the Broken Shore, Kul Taras, and Zandalar. This is not the difficult part, however, because to be able to access Baal, the player needs to have another secret pet from Legion unlocked, which is a pet named Una. Una drops from the mini Face Devourer and the Untorn Waste and Argus with a 28% drop rate. A player can only loot the mini Face Devourer once a day. To be able to use Una properly in order to obtain Ball, you need to complete Una's own storyline, which involves three major parts. The first part involves doing several emotes at her and then taking her to specific places in Outland, Kalimdor, Draenor, and Argus. At each location, she'll have a little bit of dialogue which furthers her story. The second part of her storyline includes a short scenario which can be entered in from Dragonblight in Northrend. The third and final step to unlock Una is to take her on a world tour through many continents and zones in Azeroth and Draenor. At the end of this long adventure, you'll be able to slash hug Una and she'll return the hug. Once the player has Una fully unlocked and has clicked all 13 pebbles in the correct order, they can travel to Frostfire Ridge in Draenor, where they can finally pet Ball. Ball will one-shot battle pets unless Una weakens him. Defeating Ball in a pet battle will award you the Ball's Dark Sign, which will teach you how to summon him. Overall, obtaining Ball himself is pretty easy since it's just clicking pedals and doing a pet battle. It's getting Una that's the hard part, especially since you have to travel around a lot. While Una could have easily been on this list since Ball requires some extra steps, he ultimately takes more time so he replaces Una and lands at number 9 on this list. Not including farming Una's doll, the complete quest line will take several hours just to obtain Una and then Ball. Although if you're lazy and have a friend who already has Una complete, they can weaken Ball for you with some quick tricks. And at number 8, we have the level pet Trunks from the Warlords of Draenor expansion. This pet is awarded to players who complete the achievement in Awfully Big Adventure. This achievement can take a very long time since it involves quite a bit of pet battling. While at first, it looks like the achievement requires defeating 44 different pet tamers across Kalimdor, the Eastern Kingdoms, the Darkwind Fair, Pandaria, and Draenor. That's the easy part of the achievement. The difficult part of the achievement is that each pet tamer must be defeated while the player has an Elec Plushie on their pet battle team. The Elec Plushie is a pet which can be made by tailors from World to Draenor. Then getting the Elec Plush level 25 and getting the overstuffed achievement. While the Elec Plushie is very cute, it unfortunately has no damaging moves. Instead, it has abilities such as Look Cute and Nap Time. 
This means that the other two pet battles on the team, with the Alec plushie, you have to be able to carry it through all 44 pet tamers. To make matters worse, some of the 44 pet battle tamers required to defeat are some of the hardest in the game, even without only having two pets to defeat them with. Luckily, there are two helpful tips for anyone trying to earn the achievement in Awfully Big Adventure and the pet trunks. First, the Alec plushie does not need to be alive at the end of the battle for you to get the credit for the achievement. Tendentially related to this, you can thus use the Alec plushie to absorb damage instead of having to hit another one of your pets that actually does damage, which is just a fancy way of saying the Alec plushie can tank so your other pets don't take damage. And the Alec plushie does have a move that lets it swap out after absorbing a hit, so it can alleviate the requirement of having to use it somewhat. Technically, this entire achievement can complete it in a day, but the achievement requires a lot of traveling, healing pets, switching pets, and having unique pet strategies employed for each pet master to ensure your pets don't get immediately annihilated. Because even one of these pet battles can be a proactive affair, let alone 44 of them over all the different worlds. Trunks is definitely worthy of a mention on this list. It requires a lot of patience, diligence, time, healing bandages, and watching a lot of Hazel Games YouTube pet battle strategy videos, or taking a look at the website Zufu's Pet Guides, which has player submitted guides that can better suit your pets that you might already have. And at number 7, we have the Spine Claw Crab, which is a pet obtained from the Timeless Isle from the Mr. Pandera expansion. This pet has a 2% drop rate from the Monstrous Spine Claw, which is a rare lead. As if the 2% drop rate wasn't bad enough, the Monstrous Spine Claw only has a low chance to spawn in place of a regular Ancient Spine Claw, which can be found alongside the shore off the coast of the Timeless Isle. This means the only way to obtain this pet is to farm Ancient Spine Claws until the rare spawns in its place, and then to farm those rares. While the exact spawn rate is unknown, Wowhead comets speculate around 5-2% of the time a monstrous spine claw will spawn instead of a regular one. Combined with the 2% drop rates, this means there is a roughly 0.1% chance for the ancient spine claw the player kills to spawn the monstrous spine claw rare which will drop the pet. Needless to say, many people have spent days to weeks to months farming this pet, and it is usually one of the few remaining, if not last thing players need for the achievement going to need a bigger bag. To make matters worse, the player must loot the pet to earn the credit meaning buying it off the auction house will not give you credit towards the achievement. Additionally, while you can farm all the crabs you want, other players will often kill the rare before you have time to run back to it or even realize that it has spawned. This makes it one of the most painful grinds in the entire game, and has caused many headaches. While it technically can be acquired in one day, it is still one of the few pets in the game that requires so much farming with such a low drop rate that it deserves to spawn this list of time sink pets. And at number 6, we have the Pygmy Cow. This pet can be obtained from the player's garrison once they've built a rank 3 barn. While that doesn't sound too daunting at first, it is actually quite a handful. First, a player must complete the main garrison campaign alongside the associated quest. Next, the player must buy the barn blueprint and build it, which alone takes one hour. To make the work order to barn, the player must go out into the open world, bring down health of a select handful of capturable mobs, and then get them to walk over the trap placed by the player. All of that work only results in the placing of one work order back in the garrison, and each work order takes four hours to complete. Although you can queue up multiple work orders and add followers, you can only place so many work orders at a time. A level 1 building can only process 7 work orders, a level 2 building can process 14 work orders, and a level 3 can process 21 work orders simultaneously. To upgrade the barn to level 2, the player must complete 50 work orders at the barn. This awards the achievement to the trap game and the level 2 blueprint to the barn. Another hour later, the player will have a level 2 barn, which they must place another 75 orders for a total of 125 work orders to get the achievement, Master Trapper, which unlocks the level 3 blueprint for the barn. Once the level 3 barn is finished an hour later, the player can finally loot the Pygmy Cow Pet, at the cost of about 20 days of time. Theoretically, this means if a player already had all 125 animals caught and had a level 1 barn set up, it would take them exactly 58 hours to get a level 3 barn and then finally get the pet. That's just under two and a half days. It would mean the player would have to be instantly refreshing work orders and upgrading the barn. You can only process 35 animals at a time in the level 3 barn, with each level below it processing even less. Each achievement gives the players the blueprints needed for the next achievement, meaning you cannot upgrade them all at once. Luckily, however, blueprints are account-wide. But still, all of this work means obtaining the Pygmy Cow Pet will be at least three days at times for the average player, assuming they sleep. And if you want to waste even more time at the barn, there are two more Trapper achievements. One for placing a total of 250 work orders at the barn called Trapper's Delight, and one for placing 500 work orders at the barn for the achievement Trap Superstar. And at number 5, we have two pets which are also from the Wad Garrison. These two pets are the Land Shark and the Sea Calf, both of which are sold by Nat Pagel at the Fishing Shack in the Player's Garrison. To obtain these pets, the players must finish the Garrison quest line and have a level 3 Garrison. They must then complete the quest Anglin' in our Garrison. This quest is pretty simple and just sees the player fish up some fish or an NPC who then returns to the Garrison. This quest unlocks level 1 Fishing Shack and after it's built, the player can then buy the blueprints for the level 2 Fishing Shack, which costs 1000 gold. After all that, the hard part begins. To be able to buy the level 3 Fishing Shack, the player must complete the achievement Drainor Angler. This achievement is quite tedious and requires the player to catch 700 specific fish. 
Specifically, it is a meta achievement and consists of seven other achievements, each of which requires a player to fish up 100 specific type of fish. These achievements include Sea Scorpion Angler, Fat Sleeper Angler, Blackwater Whip Angler, Fire Ammonite Angler, Jawless Skulker Angler, Blind Lake Surgeon Angler, and Abyssal Gulper Eel Angler. To make this achievement even worse, remember, Warlords of Draenor has different sizes of fish, and for the achievement, it specifies the need to be 100 enormous type of the specific fish. Additionally, many of the fish can only be found in certain pools and certain zones across Draenor, so flying around Draenor to fish in each zone for a while is almost required. After the player has earned the Draenor Angler achievement and built a level 3 fishing shack, they will get a quest to invite Nat Pangle to their garrison. This quest line isn't too long and also awards Nat Pangle as a garrison follower. Once Nat is in the player's garrison, players will have a chance to fish up Lunkers of each fish type from all over Draenor. The player can give the Lunker to Nat, who will trade it for one of Nat's lucky coins. It should be noted that Lunkers can only be fished once Nat is in the player's garrison or accompany the player during his quest, so all the fishing before his quest will not have awarded any Lunkers. Finally, after the player has collected 50 of these coins, they can buy one of the pets that Nat offers. Both the Land Shark and Sea Calf cost 50 of Nat's lucky coins each, so you have to fish up 100 total Lunkers to get both of them. Nat sells a handful of other items, including his drinking hat and a mount. The Land Shark and Sea Calf are on this list simply because they require so much time spent fishing, and after all of that, the RNG of getting Lunkers. While it does require many hours spent fishing, it at least does not lock behind any time mechanisms and can be constantly worked on, unlike most of the pets listed next on this list. And at number 4, we have the Searing Scorchling pet, which can be obtained from a troll vendor in the Molten Front during the Assault on the Firelands. To unlock Zen Vorka, which is the vendor who sells the pet, the player must complete the initial assault phase of the Firelands questline, which itself requires doing most of the quests in the Mount Hyjal zone. Zen Vorka sells Zen Vorka's cash for 30 marks of the World Tree, which has a chance to drop the Searing Scorchling. Marks of the World Tree come from doing dailies associated with the Molten Front Offensive. To get 30 marks of the World Tree usually takes roughly 5 days of doing dailies, and some of the dailies can be quite long and annoying. However, the further the player advances in the Molten Front campaign, the more dailies they have access to, and thus can get more marks of the World Tree per day. Once players have obtained 30 marks of the World Tree, they can go to the aforementioned vendor, Zen Vorka, inside the Sentinel Tree at Malfurion's Breach near the entrance of the Firelands. Even after all that questing and several days worth of dailies to get the required 30 marks of the World Tree, there is only roughly a 5% drop chance for the Scorched Stone from Zen Vorka's cash. The Scorched Stone is an item the player uses in order to learn how to summon the Searing Scorchling. Usually, Zen Vorka's cash just drops some gold and a green open world loot drop. Unless you're quite lucky, this means that every attempt to acquire the Searing Scorchling will cost about 5 days worth of dailies to get another 30 marks of the little tree to get another cash for the Searing Scorchling to possibly drop from. As a side note, this pet was originally added in the Burning Crusade and can be found inside the ice chest after defeating Lord Ahud in the Slay Pens during the 2008-2009 Midsummer Fire Festival, but was removed in 2010s and not obtainable again until patch 4.2 over a year later. And at number 3, we have Pebble. Pebble is quite literally a pet rock and is awarded to player after they've completed the achievement Rock Lover, which is earned by completing the daily quest Lost in the Deeps 10 times. This daily quest has the player rescue a cute little rock elemental named Pebble in Deep Home. This daily quest can be obtained from the Pyrite Stone Tender at Therizin's Throne. What makes this little guy such a nightmare to get is a combination of several factors. First, the daily quest one needs to do, Lost in the Deeps, only has a low chance to spawn each day, meaning it can be weeks before the daily quest can even be done once, let alone 10 times. Additionally, the daily quest itself can be quite annoying since it's an escort quest which requires the player to go into the crumbling depths and navigate a maze of tunnels. The player must also make sure to avoid a large rock borer that can daze you and reset your position to the entrance of the cavern. The player must escort Pebble out of the labyrinth caverns and pass the borer with precision timing or else they'll be stunned and Pebble will be eaten. This means if you get hit by the giant rockworm, you'll have to start the escort quest all over again, which requires running all the way back through the long maze. Luckily, the pet is just a guardian that follows you around, so it's not as annoying as a normal escort quest. In addition to the daily RNG and quest grind, players must also have completed most of the Deep Hall quest line and be honored with Therizane before they can even gain access to the daily quest. If you're incredibly lucky, this quest will only take you 10 days, but it will probably take you much longer than that, which means it's sure to be a long wait in time sync to finally obtain Pebble. And at number 2, we have Cadgar's Floating Head from Legion. The Wondrous Wisdom Ball has a small chance, and I mean very small chance, to drop from a Curantor chest. Data from this drop chance is very hard to come by, but Wildhead Comet's indicated to be less than a 1% drop. 
people have been farming for this unique pet ever since it came out several years ago. What makes obtaining this pet so time consuming is that the Kirin Tor Emissary Cash can only be obtained after a player has completed three Kirin Tor World Quests throughout the Broken Isles while the Emissary Quest is active. Since there are nine total emissaries in Legion, there is only a 1 out of 7 chance that Kirin Tor will even be up for a day, since emissary quests are only up for 3 days and no two emissary quests are up at the same time. It should be specified that the pet itself does not drop from the cache, but rather starts a quest from the item called the Strange Humming Crystal. This quest tells the player to take the crystal to Khadgar so he can examine it. Khadgar explains that it's a highborn memory crystal and gives a quest to the player called Enemies Everywhere. During the quest, the players discover several spies in Dalaran and dispose of them with the help of Khadgar. After completing the quest, Khadgar exclaims, I have imparted all of my substantially worldly wisdom into this globe, in addition to my ruggedly handsome features. No doubt you will find my counsel invaluable in your travels. And the player receives the pet Wondrous Wisdom Ball. The pet acts similar to a Magic 8 Ball, where the player can ask a question and Kagra's head can offer them a variety of answers. By clicking the ball, players can get several responses, which can include No, Yes, Actually, Outlook is Certain, Certain Death, Defeat is Assured, Reply, Hazy, Try Again, You Won't Likely Survive, Most Likely, let me confer with my sources. No. Let me confer with my sources. Yes. Not likely. In this timeline. Outlook unclear. Gather 4,289 more Apexis crystals and ask again. Your sound card works perfectly. This pet is so iconic it's been used multiple times within Hearthstone from the dungeon run to battleground quest, even shown up quite actively in one specific fellow WoWTubers videos. And finally at number one, we have a tie for the two honor level 400 pets. Upon reaching Honor Level 400, the player will receive an achievement and be able to buy a faction-specific pet. For Horde, the pet is named Bucket Shell, and for the Alliance, it's named Sir Snips. These pets were added at the beginning of BFA, with the Honor Level systems being redone from Legion's prestige rankings to the current Honor Level system. Both Bucket Shell and Sir Snips cost 500 gold and can be bought from several PP vendors located in Boralus, Legion Dalaran, Nashatar, Orgrimmar, Stormwood, and Zoldazar. For those wondering, each Honor Level is 800 Honor Points. That means to earn this achievement, the player needs to earn 3,520,000 honor points in total. This is no easy feat by any means, and requires countless thousands of hours of PvP. Blizzard has made sure that there is always a bigger PvP achievement honor grind after Legion. For comparison, in Legion, prestige levels 1 to 26 were 45,000 honor per prestige. Not including factoring the shorter amount of honor for Prestige 1, the player only need 117,000 honor to get Prestige level 26 in Legion and be complete on their honor grind. And by having high honor ranks and multiple characters did give you a good head start when the conversion to overall account honor levels took place. Of course, there is also now the even more insane achievement for the honor level 500, and Blizzard will probably add even further honor level achievements in the future. Luckily, honor is tracked account wide now, so earning honor on any character alt will earn credit towards this achievement. Additionally, there are many honor level achievements between honor level 0 and honor level 400, with each achievement given unique rewards such as a pet, title, mount, and one of the many unique toy banners which allow you to permanently have a rather cool faction banner on your back. Honor level 400 is a long way down the line for most casual PvPers, with the first honor level achievements being at levels 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30, and then they continue on every 10 levels until honor level 100. From honor level 100 to 200, there are achievements every 25 honor levels, there are also achievements at honor levels 250 and 300. The honor level 400 achievement and the two best pets that come with it are such a time sink that according to all the Wildhead's profiles, 0% of players have earned Bucket Shell and Sir Snips. This is probably not an achievement you should actively be trying to get, and more of a passive one. Grinding over 3.5 million honor is sure to make anyone a little bit crappy. Alright, and that's it for the video. What pets have taken you the longest to get? Do you have any ideas for future videos similar to this one? If so, let us know down in the comments below. Also, just a quick little aside, we have a Pokemon TCG channel now. So if you like the videos on this channel, well, that channel is basically that, just with the Pokemon TCG. We have a video going over some of the earliest Pokemon cards, so if you like that, you should check it out in the video description or at the end of this video right now.